Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY, and today I'm going to show you how to install and or replace a water supply line to your house. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to excavate a ditch. Now you're probably going to be using a backhoe like the one behind me. If that's the case, make sure you dial 811 or call before you dig. If you guys have no idea what that is, go ahead and check out my other video. I explain everything. It's really important. What we did is we dug all the way down from our curb stop to our house. And in Pennsylvania here, we want to be below the frost line for our water line so it doesn't freeze. And that's 36 inches. So we made it 36 inches deep the entire way. After you have your trench dug down to below the frost line, the next thing you need to do is level out your ditch. It's going to have some ups and downs in it from excavating. Go ahead and level that out. After you're done with that, you're going to need to put down a protection bed. As you can see behind us here, we have a lot of shale in our ditch. It's a lot of these rocks that are really knife uh, blade shaped, have really points on them. And if we were to lay our pipe directly on top of that and then just backfill, all that pressure is going to push down on these sharp um, edges of these rocks and it could perforate our pipe, it could cut it, it could kink it, do all sorts of stuff that you don't want. So what you're going to do is put down a protection bed. It could be either sifted soil or sand would be the best. A lot of guys will say put down crushed stone, but that's absolutely the worst idea. Crushed stone has a lot of sharp little edges to it and what's going to happen is as the water flows through the line, it's going to move around a little bit on that bed of crushed stone and those sharp little edges is going to dig and dig and dig into your copper line eventually making little pinholes in it that's exactly what we don't want so don't use crushed stone sand is the best if you don't have access to that sift out some uh, topsoil rake out the rocks that's just fine just put down maybe two three inches enough so where you when you backfill it won't press down into these sharp rocks Okay, now that we have our bed down, we gotta roll out our pipe. And what I have right here is copper tubing. Um, for where I'm located at, this is what is required. We can't use PEX. So the best way to roll this out is just to lay it on the ground and just kinda step on one end and then just go ahead and roll it all the way out. Um, it's pretty easy to do it that way. It stays in place pretty good and uh, it's, it's okay. Um, we'll go over a little pros and cons of this stuff. This stuff is crazy expensive. For a 100 foot roll of three quarter inch, you're talking 350 to $400, all depends where you get it. The highest quote in my area, what I got was $500 for a 100 foot roll. Absolutely insane. Uh, PEX, way cheaper. I'm talking 10 times cheaper. I could pick up a roll off of PEX Universe which is where I get all of my PEX stuff, and it was $35 for a 100 foot roll, so literally 10 times cheaper. Um, as far as pros and cons with putting this in the ditch, do not use crushed stone, as I said before, it will eat through this, pick little holes in it. PEX, I still won't use crushed stone, but you can. Sand is the best, so go with that if you guys can. Um, when you're laying this, uh, copper pipe is very easy. You just roll it out. It stays the form of your ditch. Um, PEX gets a little wiry. It, it kind of goes all over the place. Um, when you're backfilling, if you guys drop a big rock or something on this and it crushes this, it's going to deform and it's going to stay that way. PEX is a little bit more forgiving. It kind of bounces, kind of retains its shape. Um, but if you start squashing it too much, you're gonna see it turns a little white um, and get might get a crease in there and that's where it's gonna fail. So too much um, pressure on it, like from a rock or stepping on it, you're definitely gonna mess up PEX, but this stuff is gonna keep its form and you're gonna have it flat and it's gonna be messed up. So you got a little bit more care with your copper pipe. As far as fittings go, we are using compression fittings on our copper. You can use them on PEX also, but you're gonna to need to put an insert in there so it doesn't crush it. Um, connection wise, uh, it's a little bit harder with your copper, um, with PEX you can crimp, uh, they don't really recommend that underground, they still recommend the compression, but you can double crimp and you can get away with it if that's all you got. So if you guys can use it, I would definitely, definitely recommend the PEX, it's going to save you tons of money, especially over the copper. 
Okay, we got our line all the way strung out. We came down to our house, did a 90 degree turn. And you can see here that we had to go under our French drain. And you can see right in the back here where we went through our cinder block wall. That hole to the left is where we actually caught a web in the cinder block. So we had to go a little bit more to the right than I thought. Uh, to get through there, all we did was use an auger uh, mason bit and drill the hole through. And we knocked it with a, uh, with a steel rod and knocked the rest of it out because we didn't have an auger bit that was wide enough. Now you can see here, we're gonna have a little problem with my French drain. There's a lot of stone here, so we're gonna pack dirt and maybe some fabric around our pipe to protect it from all this rock. And uh, it's below the French drain, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so here is the setup inside my house. You can see down here, we came through the brick and we are going to schmutz around that with some hydraulic cement. Once everything is uh, inspected, just got that from Home Depot, it was like seven bucks a pail. So the connections that we have here, we come into the house with our K-copper and we have our first compression fitting. Um, this is so we can get threaded material and go from there. So we have an elbow and then I wanted to be able to run it along the wall. So we have the elbow, we have a ball valve which is required before the meter. We have our meter and then we have another ball valve. So this is what is required. You gotta have those two ball valves on either side of the meter. That way the water authority can fix the meter. If they have to, they can shut it off before, take it off, repair it, do whatever. So that's what they required. And then all we're gonna do is go to PEX the rest of the way. So this is what it looks like for my house. I have my old meter right here. Um, so that's why we wanted to do the 90. Otherwise, just run it straight out of the wall like this one was, and then up to your pecs. So that's what it looks like inside the house. Okay, so what we did is we did all of our fittings and everything with the meter inside the house first. Um, and we just left our roll of K-copper outside. That way, if we messed up with anything, all we had to do is just feed that K-copper back inside the house and redo it. We didn't have to try and stretch out our line because we already had it hooked up up top. So that's the way we did it down there. We uh, had that emergency little bit if we needed it. So after we were done in the house, that's when we rolled out our cake topper. We came up our ditch, rolled it out, and then uh, we're gonna head up here to our curb stop and finish hooking it up. Now that we have dug down from our curb stop all the way to the bottom, our ball valve is down here. What we need to do is the line that we've laid, we're gonna take a compression fitting. We are going to screw it into our ball valve first, and then we are going to attach our line into the compression. We used pipe dope for all of our threaded connections, and we just took the brush and gave it a good even coat over all of the threads. At the curb stop, we threaded it in by hand, and then tightened it up with a wrench a little bit and then gave it one full turn after we had it snug to make it tight. Okay, for our compression, there is a nut, a crimp ring, and what you do is you put your nut on the end of your pipe, put your crimp ring over top, and all you do is push your tubing into your body of the compression itself. Push it all the way in until it seats, and then go ahead and screw this on. Okay, we got our everything hooked up from the curb stop all the way down the trench to the house. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a bedding of topsoil down. Uh, we got a topsoil pile here, we're just gonna pull down and put about three to four inches on top to help protect it from all of this huge rocky pieces here. Um, they're pretty big, so what we're gonna do is put that bedding down and then pull the rest of it down on top of it. Remember, everything is about protecting this pipe, so make sure you have it uh, covered the entire way.
Okay, so here is the very last step that we need to do. Uh, we have our bed of topsoil on top of the pipe or sand if you have it. And we're gonna start to backfill a little bit and get about a foot above your water main. And we're gonna lay down this caution tape. Uh, the reason we're gonna be doing that is if they, someone comes and digs this up again, when they get through it and rip it with the backhoe teeth, you're gonna expose this line. That way they know that something is directly below it. Um, we're gonna run this the entire way and they make two different types of material. This is the more like the cheap plastic kind. They also make a woven kind. Uh, it's a little bit more durable than this, uh, but it acts the same way. So once you have all that in, backfill it all the way, and then you're done. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. And then head over to my channel at Appalachian DIY to enjoy more videos. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you next time.